everybody, this is Rich Nelson from Giant Goblin Games. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the four different Dark Force armies that you can field in Storm the Castle. Alright, let's talk about the first army, the Green Tide. The Green Tide is a loose tribal alliance made up of goblins, orcs, and giants. Um, their primary focus is to smash and destroy. Uh, the giants are one of the the primary army that uses a lot of equipment like rocket boots or brass knuckles or pirate ale and so forth. Um, let's take a look at each of the five different unique units and just briefly go over um, some of their abilities. Um, the Goblin Sapa is one gold uh, and it has two health. Its main purpose is basically you're getting these willing or unwilling goblins strapping this huge bomb on them and throwing them up against castle walls and then they blow up they do a lot of damage but once they do that they're gone they're a cheap unit but they can get the job done sometimes um, some players will feel tons of goblin sappers and just go away you know wave after wave of that so we've seen that that's been pretty fun to watch as well the orc pirates they're uh, a, a really good for the cost uh, two gold they get two attack and two health uh, they have no special abilities but they're a great uh, frontline troop uh, that can take damage and deal damage. The Roaring Giant is basically your huge monstrosity. Um, it's a little bit more pricey. He moves slow, but he does cause fear. Uh, fear is a special ability in the game. Uh, units that are slow and have that that have that trait actually only move one space every turn. Uh, if you have fear, uh, you have a chance to basically negate someone from attacking you because uh, they get scared and there's a Roaring Giant. Uh, his special ability is um, he can push to roar and to gain that fear. Uh, the Rock Lobber is a ranged siege unit for the Green Tide, so it's great at hurling uh, boulders at the castle walls and doing a lot of damage at a distance. And finally, the Big Chief. That's your champion. Uh, all champions cost five gold. Um, the Big Chief here basically has an area of effect attack, so when he's in the castle, any unit that's next to him, you can replace your normal attack for spinning doom, and every unit around him uh, gets attacked and takes plus one damage. Next up are the Dark Elves. So they're the, mas they're the masters of long-range combat and treachery in the game. So they've got some awesome power cards that augment their shooting abilities, which is ranged, un ranged battle in Storm the Castle is really good because when you can shoot someone from range, typically that can they can't fight you back. Uh, and they've got power cards that screw with the other players. You know, they're just sneaky. So let's uh, quickly take a look at the five unique units. The Dark Elf Archer has a range of two, so it's got a, a great distance where you can shoot from. Uh, the Dark Miner is uh, basically Dwarven slaves that are now controlled by the Dark Elves. They really shine when they're attacking structures like castle buildings or castle walls. Their, their attack actually increases. The Dragon Ballista is the main siege weapon for the Dark Elves. Uh, it's got an attack 2, a health 2. And what you can do is you can push this unit to fire more. Pushing is basically you're, you're straining that unit or weapon to do more than when it should. And it's got a range 3, so it's got some great distance to it. Uh, next up is the Infiltrator. The great thing about the Infiltrator is that when it deploys, it actually deploys one space closer to the castle in that middle battlefield space. Uh, so it gets your units closer to the castle when you deploy. And when it deploys, you can also uh, equip it with Climbing Claws, which is a unique equipment to the Dark Elves. So basically he gets this uh, these claws on his hands and he can scale walls and battle people who are defending the walls and get bonuses. Finally, the Dark Elf Champion, uh, he's got a great attack at three and um, his special abilities here is that units can't fight back when he is fighting them. So uh, that gives your Dark Elf Champion an incentive to go, go ahead and get in the fray of battle and an attack because units can't fight you back. And finally, he uh, he has got some special other abilities, like he, he moves as if he has climbing claws, and you can uh, exchange your normal attack to give him a ranged attack. You're basically shooting out your dragon out at a unit uh, to do an attack too, so that's pretty powerful. And one of his traits is armor, so uh, when you're being attacked, you have a chance to negate one of those damages. So that's the Dark Elves. Hope you enjoy it, and let's uh, talk about the next army. The Undead Horde is a very awesome army. 
It is made up of ghost fiends, skeletal warriors, zombies, necromancers, uh, and it's one of the armies that uses magic in the game. Let's go ahead and uh, dive a little bit deeper into the units and what they do. Uh, the Ghost Fiends uh, cost 3 gold, they've got 2 attack, 2 health, and what's cool about them is they have some special abilities where they, they ignore move lock, and move lock is uh, a rule in the game basically preventing uh, the Dark Force players from skirting past the Fantasy Defenders. Uh, so the Ghost Fiends are allowed to move past the Fantasy Defenders because they're ghosts. And they can also pay magic to move through structures and to gain fear. So they're a great unit where they can just phase through walls and they don't have to worry about placing ladders or knocking down the walls. Skeletal Warriors are just a basic troop, um, but a great ability of theirs is that when they're destroyed, you can pay magic and they stay there. Uh, they become flipped, meaning... Uh, the token, the, the units, when you flip them over, they've got a day symbol or a stun symbol. So they stay in play and they can come back on your next turn when you unflip it. The Skull Battering Ram is the primary siege unit for the Undead Horde. Uh, it has a great attack at three and it can take a lot of damage, uh, but it is a slow unit. The Zombie Horde uh, can soak up a lot of damage for a minimal cost of two gold. Uh, and what they can do is you can spend magic to also gain fear with them. Uh, and unfortunately, the zombie horde, because they're zombies, they strike last in battle. So if a unit is able to wipe you out, it's attack, you won't be able to fight back. Uh, because battle is simultaneous in Star Storm the Castle. And finally, there's the Necromancer Champion. The Undead Horde's magic works like this. Every undead unit that you have in play gets you one magic uh, when on your collect phase. When the Necromancer Champion comes out, you gain two magic when he deploys. And whenever any of your undead units is destroyed or you destroy another unit, you gain magic. So all that battlefield chaos actually fuels your undead horde's magic. And finally, the uh, Necromancer Champion uh, basically radiates this fear aura, and so any any of your friendly units that are adjacent to him gain plus one fear. So that's actually a great way to uh, scare people away on the battlefield uh, from not attacking you. But that means you got to get your Necromancer Champion in the thick of battle, and he can't take that much damage. He's only got a one health, so you got to protect him. So if you love the undead, you love using kind of like that dark magic. Uh, and having zombies and ghosts and skeletons and uh, some really cool power cards uh, that augment your power, uh, your your army. You're gonna love the undead horde. All right, let's talk about the Arcanists. The Arcanists are uh, one of the other magic wielding dark force armies in the game, and how they focus magic and gain that magic is uh, they've got units called casters and those casters will generate X amount of magic per turn and you're going to use that magic to fuel your unit special abilities or play power cards um, such as force quake um, or other cards that will give you really powerful advantages in the game. Uh, now one of the drawbacks of the Arcanist is that they don't have really strong uh, you know, attacking units, and they can't take that much damage, but their magic really makes up for that and gives them some unique advantages in the game. Okay, up first is the Arcane Warrior. It's basically the jack-of-all-trades unit. Um, you can spend magic to increase his armor, his attack, or move, and uh, yeah, so he, he can be flexible based on what's going on in the game. Next is the Mage Knot. It's uh, the steampunk siege machine for the Arcanist. For the Mage Knot, you can beef him up by making him more powerful when attacking castle walls and structures. And he can repair health, and he can generate magic. Um, so he's a great unit, but unfortunately you can't give him equipment, he's slow, and he strikes last in battle. Next is the Twilight Mage. These are your main wizards what they'll do is they generate two magic per turn. So the more you get out of these, or, or deploy of these, the more magic you're gonna get a turn. And they can cast magic, so they're pretty powerful. The Witchling is the dark and mysterious lady of the woods. Um, and so what she does is every time she damages a unit, she generates magic for you. 
So let's say she attacked and she was able to do two damage to a unit. That's two magic you just generated. And she can reroll attacks because, you know, she's got these red crazy claw hands. Next is the Arcane Champion. Uh, when he's deployed, he gets he automatically generates three magic for your army. And you can search your power card deck for any magic action in there. So if you really need a spell that you don't have, you're going to deploy him, bring him out, and you get to pick. And all your magic cards, your power cards, cost one less magic. So that's a very powerful ability. And finally, he generates three magic a turn for you. Well, that's the Dark Force overview in as quickly as I could do that. And hope you enjoyed it. And uh, start thinking about what army you're going to play and start mastering. Every army has a unique power card deck. So no army is the same. And there's some interesting combinations that you'll be discovering as you play. Hope you enjoy this and we'll talk to you next time.